kids, it's time for What Happened! Uh, the show that chronicles the video game and movie industries with uh, stories of... I can't even... Uh, this started off way too depressing! Whose idea was it to use the moonshot as a cold open? Mega Man Legends 3 is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of feelings associated with this one, and thanks to Emily down at the Flophouse VIP Patreon, we are finally cracking open this energy tank of emotions. Are you okay, Mega Man? I hate my birthday! If you were cruising along the Information Superhighway circa 2011, you were probably aware of the cancellation heard around the world. Mega Man fans, Legends 1 specifically, had been waiting for a conclusion to the cliffhanger ending of 2000's Mega Man Legends 2 for a decade. So when Capcom finally announced their intention to resurrect this spin-off of the Mega Man universe, yeah, no, not that universe, that's a whole- we'll- we'll get to that. Well, the world came together in celebration. Finally, there would be some type of resolution, some type of closure to Volnut's tragic fate. But just as this newfound joy and optimism had begun to burn, it was just as quickly extinguished. Which led to a whole lot of, uh, displeasure. In fact, 2010 and 2011 were pretty bad years for the Blue Bomber in general, as two other projects centering around the little guy were also cancelled, and it all circles back to one man, good old Papa Inafune. So check your circuits and prime your busters, it's time to find out what happened to Mega Man Legends 3. Here we go! In the late 2000s, digital downloadable games were starting to take off, with Mega Man leading the charge. Uh, yeah, kinda. Sure, he was no longer getting any blockbuster AAA releases, but 8-bit throwbacks Mega Man 9 and 10 at least springboarded him back into the conversation. Now, while 10 retreaded much of the same ground and was subsequently reviewed lower and sold less than 9, it at least seemed like the franchise would continue humming along. Underneath the blue armor, though, that wasn't exactly the case. Inafune had hit Capcom's glass ceiling at that point, having quickly grown frustrated with the global head of production position he had been promoted to in early 2010. Not only that, some of his initiatives, like Capcom's big push into more Western-style games, started generating more misses than hits. Now, some of the following information throughout this video was imparted to me from a source with some knowledge of the goings-on at Capcom at the time, but something everyone knew was that Mega Man was more or less Inafune's baby. Mama. He had started producing the entire series in 1996, and thus became associated with it more than any other staff member at Capcom. So, using the success of the new 8-bit games as a launching pad, he decided to set up three drastically different projects within Capcom that would hopefully propel the Blue Bomber into further prominence. There was, of course, Legends 3, the aforementioned Mega Man universe, and finally, the never officially announced, but nevertheless very real, Maverick Hunter, a Western-flavored first-person shooter set in a rebooted X continuity, I think? which was being developed by Armature, who were composed of former members of Retro Studios. Which raises a pertinent question. What is taking so long? It was a big gamble, launching three very different titles, all under the same series umbrella. But since Inafune had been given the power to do so, he decided to flex. As 2010 wore on, though, he and the higher-ups on the corporate level of Capcom had some type of disagreement. Rumors about the issue ranged from fallout regarding the increasing failures from the Western push, to Inafune seeking more autonomy within the company and then being denied. Regardless of the reason, the fact was he was gone, and any of the games he was in charge of were left pretty rudderless. This all went down in late October of 2010, a mere month after Legends 3 was formally announced at a Nintendo 3DS-centered press conference. With Inafune being the long-standing producer of Mega Man, this obviously raised some red flags within the community, but fortunately, the Legends 3 team clarified that development would indeed continue. Don't worry, it won't take very long. 
Now, as admirable as that statement was, it wasn't exactly the most realistic scenario in the world because it doesn't matter if it's 2022 or 1992 if a franchise doesn't have someone in power who can champion it, it's unlikely to get very far. With Inafune gone, one or more of these Mega Man games were getting the axe, but Legends 3 had something the other two lacked, nostalgia. It was a long-awaited sequel to a cherished spin-off series, a known quantity when compared to, say, Universe, which befuddled many as to what it actually was. Having this type of fervor, though, is both an advantage and a curse. Yeah, you have a built-in fan base, but if anything goes wrong, which it sometimes tends to do, then there's going to be a certain level of backlash, the type that only slighted Capcom fans can conjure. Aside from all that, there was one more caveat to Legends 3, a very specific chain that was clasped around its neck, that being the Dev Room, an interesting, ahead of its time and misguided idea that was meant to bring fans closer to the development of the game. Remember, this is 2010, years before things like Patreon and Kickstarter, which were designed around the idea of taking in fan feedback and input and then applying it to creative endeavors. Reportedly, this was something instituted by Inafune at the start of the project as he was well aware of just how invested fans were in the Legends franchise. The Dev Room was a website slash forum, essentially, where fans would be able to vote in polls about visual designs, speak to developers in Q&A sessions, and be able to more closely track the team's progress. As you can imagine though, since this was such a new and experimental idea, that they hadn't yet worked out all the kinks, unforeseen challenges, or even thought about it all that much. The problem with the dev room was twofold. Game development requires big lead-up times, as certain decisions need to be made far in advance so other departments can work around them. Think about any Kickstarters you might have contributed to in the past, how many emails get sent out requiring users to update their info or to get back in touch with the dev team, and that's when actual financial backing is involved. So imagine then allowing tons of random users to dictate things on a message board for free with no centralized planning and then telling a relatively new and leaderless dev team to just make it work. Unless you plan it out very meticulously, it's not going to be a realistic or time-sensitive way to build a video game, especially when Capcom bigwigs were already shooting stink eyes at the project. Polls for character designs and such therefore became less and less frequent, which caused that initial burst of fan enthusiasm to start to wane. This was the second issue. The number of active users in the dev room steadily went down month by month, which is kind of to be expected and not a knock against the fan base. As time goes on, audience retention levels will naturally decline, as you can't assume everyone is going to be glued to their seats every single day, especially if there isn't anything of note going on that week with development. Remember, this type of social interaction was relatively new and wasn't expertly planned out, so eventually people just kinda wanted to play the game to get the product in their hands. It's just how we've been taught to consume media. What Capcom didn't impart to these fans, however, was that the dev room was intrinsically linked to the survival of Mega Man Legends 3. Allow me to explain. We all know about the Capcom test, quick basic ports of older titles to gauge interest in future ones. Do you want a new Darkstalkers? Buy this and then we'll talk. Want more Onimusha? Can I interest you in an hors d'oeuvre first? For all intents and purposes, the Legends 3 dev room was the new Capcom test. It would closely monitor the interest over time, and if numbers started to dip, well, then unpleasant decisions would need to be made. The situation was even worse than that though, because Legends 3 was also on thin ice due to it being an Inafune thing, and it wasn't very far along development anyway, so losses could be easily cut. Now, as far as I can find, the team behind the game wasn't running into any technological or design problems per se, aside from maybe just being understaffed and underfunded. It's just that Volnut's return was conceived and announced under false pretenses. Despite being revealed at that Nintendo 3DS event, the game was never, I repeat, never officially greenlit for full production. 
Oh, Capcom announced that it was in the works, and if everything went well, it might see an eventual release, but it was never locked in. Usually, like, 95, 99% of games get announced after they've been officially greenlit, but for some reason, most likely at Inafune's insistence, it was decided to just skip that part? That's right! You've got it! Here's what the game's director, Mazukazo Iguchi, had to say in early 2011. On February 22nd, we've got a company meeting where we will submit Legends 3 to undergo the green lighting approval process. At Capcom, you have to spend the first few months of a project creating a sample build, then show it to various people and await their approval. We've been working away, trying to get that sample as good as we can, and now is a crucial time for us. You've all cooperated with us in getting this far, so we've got to get this project approved. If we don't, we'll have missed the boat and we won't be able to proceed with the next Next phase. Considering the show you're watching, it shouldn't be a surprise that we're not allowed to proceed into that next phase. I don't understand. Now, talking brass tacks here, as loved as it is, the Legend series was not a blockbuster, selling less than the mainline Mega Man titles of back in the day, which were selling even less than Capcom's horror action upper echelon. Now, if we fast forward to 2011, 3DS development was brand new and not exactly cheap, so the project was 100% powered by the goodwill and positive vibes of a small but passionate fan base. There were very few people at Capcom who had any illusions that this was going to be a big money spinner. And if you thought the quote from that director was bad, well, things got even worse the very next month. Mega Man Universe had its plug pulled after months of literal silence, and while Capcom never shared any details as to why, its strange premise and lack of a prominent producer to champion it was the most likely reason. And as for Maverick Hunter, that was quietly cancelled way back in 2010 despite making it to a playable prototype. It was deemed too expensive and too much of a radical shift in source material, and thus was subsequently deleted. Warning signs were blaring throughout the Mega Man community at the universe cancellation, and they were right to do so. Now, since Legends 3 failed to get the green light, the team had one final Hail Mary play, which was the Mega Man Legends 3 prototype version. This was pitched as a more convincing way to prove to the higher-ups that the fanbase was there and that the game could be a viable seller. It was essentially a vertical slice, a chunk of the game that was meant to show off what the team was shooting for and pretty much was the bulk of what they had developed so far. It was announced in April with a vague release date of soon, but was also being advertised as a paid digital download, not something everyone embraced warmly. May 2011 then rolled around with no updates until it was announced that the prototype was being delayed to an unspecified point in the future, and that's where it remained. Now, reportedly, Capcom higher-ups wanted to see some serious numbers for this demo, with 300,000 downloads being thrown around as the target, and this would not surprise me, because Capcom was all about insane, unrealistic sales forecasts around this time, something we've covered before. Now, that 300k estimate largely hinged on one thing, the success of the 3DS itself, but the March launch of that machine wasn't what many were expecting. In fact, the first few years of the handheld's life lagged behind its mighty predecessor in terms of sales, due to the higher than normal price point and the rise of mobile gaming. So, on top of everything else, the platform Legends 3 was being designed for was sputtering out the gate, and then when you factor in that the demo was going to be download only, another barrier of entry, well, mathematically, the math just wasn't mathing. Nintendo 3DS owners would need to adopt an insanely high attach rate of buying games to even come close to Capcom's projections, something they would not achieve. Now, would you like to hear my own personal perspective? No! Well, I was at Capcom's 2011 Captivate press event, which took place in May of 2011, and while there were oodles of journalists lining up to play Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Resident Evil Mercenaries 3D, and Dragon's Dogma, Legends 3 was represented by a singular kiosk flanked by a cardboard standee with a computer that was logged into the dev room forum. That's when I was all like... 
This whole situation with the prototype put everyone in an awkward position. Release the demo, it doesn't sell very well, and even more vitriol would spew about the game's inevitable cancellation. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why not just release it? Who cares? Maybe it could have sold what they were expecting. While has already stated, Capcom was hardcore into sales forecasts and mitigating all possible risks. It was just how they operated. Whenever they did try to do something different, it was often met with disappointing sales numbers. So in this instance, it was felt that it would be less damaging overall if they cut the whole Mega Man Legends 3 experiment off at the knees. Thus, two months later in July, they made it official. Legends 3 was cancelled, and neither the full game nor the prototype was going to be released. While Capcom of Japan and USA remained as tight-lipped as possible, it was Capcom's European Twitter account where the flames of fury were further fanned. I'm sad to know Legends 3 was cancelled for 3DS. Someone making decisions at Capcom's R&D HQ should get fired. Unfortunately, so few fans took part in the creation of the game. It was felt the project was not worthwhile. Now, show any social media manager this tweet today and they'd also go... <laughs> It's not a good look to imply a game's failure to release was because of the apathy of fans, but the fact was, the tweet wasn't technically wrong, just poorly worded. I say this because, as we've already discussed, the dev room was the Capcom test, connected to the game's critical circuitry in a symbiotic way. It's just that Mega Man Legends fans were never given these schematics. This then created a sort of vortex of death for Mega Man and Mega Man related projects. The final Robo Nail in the Robo Coffin. Uh, again. As mentioned earlier, without a senior creative head to protect franchises like these, they tend to fall to the wayside, like so many already have. This particular situation made it so that the rank and file of Capcom staff were hesitant to even utter the name Mega Man slash Rockman out loud, which is why it took a further seven years for it to be revived with Mega Man 11. That game's producer, Kazuhiro Tsuchiya, didn't shy away from discussing this. As I'm sure you're well aware, Inafune-san departed a long while ago. Obviously, a lot of other people were working on Mega Man at the time, and there were a lot of people within the company that had a strong desire to make a new Mega Man, but it was very difficult. The atmosphere just didn't feel right for anybody to raise their hand and say, I want to be the person that makes the next Mega Man. This was kind of the general atmosphere for a long while. It was a big reason why there was a long absence for a new Mega Man game. Unfortunately, it's been another four years since Mega Man 11, and there's still not much else going on with our favorite robotic killing machine. We did get some great legacy collections. There's always a new Netflix show or a weird movie being announced, then cancel, I'm not sure. And as of 2020, Capcom has refiled for the trademarks of The Misadventures of Tronbon and Rockman Dash. So that's something? Nah, it's probably not. Why spend money making a new Mega Man, Okami, or Strider when you can just slap a skin into Monster Hunter, I guess? Now, modern Capcom doesn't do everything right. Plenty of people have had plenty to say about how frustrating it's been to see them release games, as good as they are, but through a very narrow scope, while routinely ignoring a lot of their legacy franchises. While I do believe they've made some positive changes since 2010, I'm going to throw over to former Capcom Unity manager Gregaman, who had this to say about what the company learned from the whole debacle. Obviously, this quote is very idealistic, the uh, shareholders think very differently, but it's really the only positive thing I could find to end on. We as a publisher learned valuable lessons about the role the community can, should, and will, by any means necessary, play. In my mind, the dev room marked an evolution of our still fledgling community initiative. A milestone lesson learned and taken to heart. How lucky am I that I started my career here by helming the craziest, weirdest, most volatile experiment ever ventured by this department. MML3 realigned our compass, and whether you know it or not, you've all had an impact on Capcom. It is my hope that in time, this will lead to decisions that will bring happiness to each and every one of you. 
So yeah, that's a very nice thing to say, but we are now in 2022 and are not living through some golden age of Mega Man titles or even a lot of classic Capcom IP at all, which is obviously a... God damn it, I ended on a downer again. If you know of any other regrettable robotic wrecks, let me know in the comments below, over on my Twitter, or jump and shoot into the capsule that is the Flophouse VIP Patreon, become a big boss, and nominate a game or movie I'll cover in a future episode. See you next time, and thanks for watching! Fighting bro!